Good morning. I have to keep this kind of quick because I have to upload my YouTube video uh, from here without Wi-Fi, so it takes a while uh, to get rolling and it just it becomes too much. But uh, I guess I'm surprised by three things. Um, one, um, how fast many of you watch my videos um, and got back to me within really 25 minutes when I'm considering it was a 20 minute video. Two, some students that I thought actually watched them that haven't sent me anything back yet or the, the word, uh, words that I was looking for. Or three, that many of you do not know how to spell Michael Jordan. I've got a lot of Michelle Jordans. I got a lot of Michael Jordan with two O's. Um, I don't know if you know, but Last Dance is, is really the only new thing going on right now on ESPN, or you can download it, um, but it's fantastic. So um, hopefully by this exact moment that it, once it gets published to YouTube, hopefully you've sent me the, those words to my email so you can get the 10 out of 10, and I'll get those in the grade book by the end of the week. But, um, but that was my only assignment um, that, out of that, and I thought it was very simple. All you have to do is watch them. Um, and, and so... I have one thing I want you to do today. Um, you know, the, the thing that when it comes to the problems, people always focus in on, okay, what, what was the reason that Vietnam was the, was the first loss? I mean, it's really our first big failure as a country. Um, and when we get to the fall of Saigon next week, you, and you see how quickly you have this visual of, of American um, embassy workers as well as media members climbing up a makeshift ladder to be hoisted off on helicopters to be brought out in a ship before the Viet Cong and the North Vietnamese take over the embassy. It gives you just this awful visual, and it actually is a, a really good kind of metaphor for the entire experience but people always wonder why it was a failure it just doesn't make sense uh, strongest government in the world a tiny sliver of southeast asia i really think there's two things i think one um, was military strategy and just the war of attrition was just a bad play um, you guys have learned throughout this year that when you are fighting against a group that wants it more that is fighting even if they don't know why but they in their minds believe they are fighting for their livelihood that they're going to fight incredibly hard you you look at the revolution the british were the strongest military in the world and tried to overwhelm us with thousands upon thousands of british redcoats yet we won well, well how did that happen so i don't want to go back into that but um that's part of it, this idea of war of attrition, the idea of helicopters um, and that being our main thing, and jumping through and napalm and Agent Orange. The, the military strategy wasn't great. The other thing is the media coverage. Um, it's our first living room war, and we've talked about what that means, this idea that every night Americans could tune in on their televisions for the first time and see what happened last week and see that and, and watch the local whether that's state or even local um, group fighting uh, and being asked questions. And all it takes is one clip for a, a, a reporter behind a, a, a tree with a soldier and bullets are flying over their head and he's being interviewed and he's saying, I just want out of here. I don't get why we're here. And because of that, um, uh, America just and the government just weren't ready to how to approach a war that way. And I don't think it's ever been since. We've talked about it since the beginning of this class. War weaponry and war technology always outlasts war technique and war um, at the time. We talked about it from the revolution and guerrilla warfare to the civil war to when you had Manet bullets um, instead of these flintlock pistols and muskets. Um, to World War I with machine guns, where now we got to dig trenches, to World War II with better technology and, and, and tanks on the, east, uh, on the Eastern Front or in, in Europe, or the atomic weapon. And what is really important to understand is the ability for the United States government, or the inability for them not to be able to stop 
these news reporters from from publishing things. And so some things that the government and the army in particular, the, the armed forces were able to do during previous wars, they weren't able to do. They were able to do some of these things that in their opinion, the American people didn't know, um, didn't need to know, I'm sorry. And so when things happened and they are trying to say war is hard, war is complicated, and they are they go about saying and trying to appease the American people and then a report can come out and show that what they are saying is is maybe not completely false but is inaccurate that Americans begin to question the war and we've watched this at the beginning I'd say it's 90 10 in favor of Vietnam to oppose by the time we get to where we're talking and then really everything is uproar I'm not saying it's 50 50 but it's probably 60 percent are for it 60 percent are for it for a number of ways maybe they don't even agree with it anymore. Maybe they think going there was a, a bad idea, but they still want to finish the job for a number of reasons. That's why I always said with the war in Iraq, I don't think it was a great idea to go over there, but we went over there and we thought we, it was a good idea. We made a mistake. I think anybody would admit that, but then finish the job. Don't leave, pack up and leave and leave the people you promised in shambles. And, and th that is such a complicated argument because we talk about drones and we talk about all kinds of stuff. Um, and at what point do you just finally leave? I, I get that. But in the case of Vietnam, th there was a number of reasons you'd still be for it. And then you have about 40%. But if you were to watch the American media, you would swear it's 90-10 or 80-20. 80% are against the war. And so um, that that really... And, and the reason it, it, it causes the war to be a failure in, in, my, in my stance is that as the popularity to the war shrunk, he, congressmen and women that were going about trying to win elections started to go the route of vote for me, I'm gonna get us out of this mess. They're then voted in on that premise or something close to that. And then once it starts to get going, Congress does not enact bills into law that provide the resources to the American army in Vietnam that they needed. And so you go from a war of attrition that is just about outlasting the Vietnam to now a war of attrition that you might not have the equipment you need. And then you go to a policy of, hey, we're just going to help the Vietnamese and get out of here at some point. We're going to Vietnamization, this idea that we'll teach them, um, at how to work all our stuff. And there's some funny stuff you can watch. And I guess it's not even that funny. But they weren't teaching, the, the American soldiers weren't teaching the Vietnamese soldiers anything. There was a massive language barrier. So when the Vietnamization started, this idea of trying to, let's say a duck boat, let's say one of those duck boats that are going through the middle of the jungle, right? And you're trying to teach the Vietnamese soldiers to do that. You can't. For a couple of reasons. One, there's a language barrier. It's incredibly difficult. Two, you're not you're trying not to die. So this idea that, hey, here, come on up here. I'll show you. You're going through a jungle. You don't know if there's Viet Cong in the or North Vietnamese in the trees that are about to hit you with a sniper that are gonna be snipers. You don't have time to go, hey, come on over here and grab the wheel, and I'll show you how these levers work. It just wasn't happening. And so um, and, and that goes back to, to I think, the media. And, and I, media is maybe the bad word because in today's world, it's become something completely different. But coverage of it turned public perception against it, which didn't allow the American soldiers to, to really finish off. And they really just had no chance towards the end. They're just simply waiting out and hoping that they don't die. And that's what you hear so many soldiers say. Uh, and I, I have a, a really powerful video uh, I question to, sh to show you, to send you, um, just because it's it's one person's opinion. But it is a primary source, and he is somebody that spent a large amount of time um, in the jungle. Um, so I, 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 we'll see. Maybe if I, if you just email me and say, hey, I'd really like to see that. You know, he really gets into the idea of what in the world am I doing here, and, and what he felt most soldiers were 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 doing towards the end of the war, which is. I don't, I'm not even really fighting anymore. I'm just trying to find a way not to die. 
and it's it sounds like um, the German Hessians of of the revolution um, that we talked about earlier in the year. So, I guess here's what I want you to do, and I, I won't even make it an assignment. Um, I just like you to YouTube um, and, and try to find some local stuff, whether it's the Star Tribune um, or WCCO did a bunch of stuff out of Minneapolis or WDAY in Fargo. Try to find just some local clips, and, and it could even just be Midwest, some Midwest clips of, of reports of what it may be. So it could be about drug use. It could be just about filming that particular regiment that's out in the jungle or um, showing uh, the communications between the Vietnamese people and the soldiers. Just there's so much out there. Uh, things to YouTube would be like uh, uh, WDAY um, Vietnam coverage, uh, WCCO, Minneapolis. Uh, you'll just, you guys know how to YouTube better than me and, and do some of the searching. But just find a couple of clips. And that way I think that what I just told you will make a little bit more sense. Um, and, and, and that doesn't mean the news coverage is going to be negative about the war even. But it goes back to the living room war. This is the first time you're seeing bullets and going over heads and people dying and, and, and civilians being killed or in body bags in a village. You just did not see that in the, um, in the liberating of France in Iwo Jima. I mean, imagine, imagine if they had reporters at, at Iwo Jima where they, they literally have to kill all but 300 of 30,000 Japanese troops. They killed all 30,000 troops. So imagine if they had coverage at that point, um, how, how public perception would have been different. And maybe it wouldn't have, but I, I just find that to be fascinating. So just do a little bit of that research. I gave you that whopping giant assignment, which was watch my lecture um, and send me Michael Jordan, the words Michael Jordan back to me um, for this week. But uh, we're getting there and we'll get to the stuff um, kind of finishing off the war uh, next week and then we're in a good spot. Then I hand you the test and you guys take the test with the notes. So I send you all the notes and we're good to go, but we won't do that for a little bit. For now, it's just about you learning about what this is and, and hopefully doing a little bit of research on your own. Um, as you can see, Connor Christensen, as you can see, my mom is really big into what we've been making fun of. Live Love Lake. There's for a change of scenery. One, look at this one over here. Hopefully my mom doesn't watch this. How do I flip? Check this one out. Can you see it? Heaven is a little closer in a home by the water. Live, laugh, love. Welcome to the lake. All that stuff. This place is like uh, the ultimate when it comes to those cliche sayings. But love you, mom. Promise I did wasn't trying to make fun of you. So... Um, watch this, try to find a couple of YouTube videos, um, and, and call it a week. Um, I'll maybe send you something tomorrow, uh, in regards to, uh, that video I'd like to show you, um, or that interview. It's more of a long interview. Um, but just continue to, to do some research if you want. And if you want to listen to more music, uh, go for it. Um, there's a ton of stuff. Listen to music. Just do a, a Vietnam protest song playlist. There's tons of them on Spotify. Um, do those today when you're, when you're doing homework. Um, and listen to it. I, there's just a lot of stuff you can do, but it's up to you. Um, have a, a wonderful day, and I, I can't wait to, to see you all soon.